Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be, it's going to kind of be a part two of Dogs and Hogs, but also the, um, the Bride of Christ, the woman. Technically, this is going to be on Egypt. Now, because uh, it ties into the woman, because Abraham was promised of the Lord to, uh, his seed was to be, his children were to be like the stars in the sky and the sand on the beach. And Abraham had two children. One by Sarah, his wife, Isaac, the child of promise. And then he had another, the child by the flesh of Hagar, who was an Egyptian. And many of the Arabs claim that they are descended from Ishmael. Now, God said he would make Ishmael a great nation. And, you know, there are, I, from what I understand, there's approximately 700 million Arabic people in the Middle East. And then they're going to tell me that a paltry 12 to 15 million uh, of the you-know-whos over in the Middle East are uh, all of Israel. Well, God promised Abraham he'd be the father of many nations. So where are these many you-know-who nations? They don't exist. Why did God bless Ishmael but the you-know-whos are sadly lacking. Uh, you know. But I did an entire Bible study on Ishmael and the Arab world in Bible prophecy. Matter of fact, that was one of the first Bible studies I did back years ago. I don't remember if you knew, uh, if you remember the bulletin boards, what they had, the bulletin boards. They were sort of like chat rooms, only uh, wasn't real time. You'd post an article or something. And uh, I had a couple of them. And one guy had a Christian one, and it had a lot of people there. This was like, I think this was before fake book. But you could post articles and stuff and comments and ask questions and it was a Christian Bible group and had a lot of people on there. And I posted that uh, the Arab world and Bible prophecy. And uh, the guy asked me even to be like the, the chaplain of the, the bulletin board, the electronic bulletin board. And I posted that, and it started getting a lot of views. And the next thing you know, the company that had the bulletin board wiped out his whole channel, deleted it. He couldn't understand how or why that happened. I knew. I didn't tell him, but I knew. They didn't want the truth to come out. That's what it is. But uh, I'm going to try to remember to post the link for uh, the Arab world in Bible prophecy. And you got to remember, I wrote that, oh, not long after 9-11, back when they were blaming uh, the Saudis for the attack. <laughs> so, yeah, so we blame the Saudi, uh, Saudi nationals for the attack, but we go in and attack Iran. I mean, I'm sorry, Iraq. So, supposedly the Saudis nationals did 9-11, but we attack Iraq. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. So, right now I'm just a gnat uh, to the powers that be. And uh, 
one day they'll delete my channel, but until then, hey, I'll keep fighting. Uh, at least until the Lord tells me, up, oh, that's it, no more. All right, so. Uh, let's see. I will... Egypt was... Um, so Hagar, who was uh, Abraham's wife's handmaid, um, he was expecting a child. I think Sarah was like 90 when she had Isaac, the child of promise. Ishmael, the child of the flesh, trying to force God's hand there. It didn't work. But uh, really... Uh, when you look at the Arab world in Bible prophecy, there's, it's, uh, it's an interesting study if, you know, if you're interested in that kind of stuff. But Ishmael was to be called, he was to be, uh, he was told, he was told by, God told Abraham that Ishmael would be a wild man of the desert and his hand would be upon every man's hand. And your demon nominational preachers will say, oh, well, that doesn't apply to the Arabs. Really? The wild man of the desert whose hand was against every man? That, who does that apply to then? You know, why are they flooding Europe and the UK, EU, EU and the UK with uh, Muslims? Why? Because the enemy knows what they are. You know, so, but yet they were, some of them, some of them are the children of Abraham. And there's, I think, 700 million Arabs. And then there's a paltry 12 to 15 million of the uh, you-know-whos that live over in the Middle East that are not Arabs. All right, uh, and you can read about this in Genesis chapter... 16 and uh, yeah about uh, Hagar and then you could read in Genesis 21 where Sarah tells Abraham to kick out Hagar and her son get rid of them I don't want them to be heir with my son, Isaac. And then in verse 25, verse 12, we says, Now these are the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar, the Egyptian, Sarah's handmaid, bare unto Abraham. And you could read about it. He had a lot of, you know, he, Ishmael had a lot of sons. And, uh... Esau took uh, of daughters of, well, at least one daughter of Ishmael. And I'm kind of of the opinion, I know I've mentioned it before, but I'm of the opinion that uh, Ishmael and Esau probably swapped daughters with each other. So, I don't know. Uh, Bible doesn't really record a lot of it. You know, I mean, the Bible doesn't even tell you who uh, Noah and his wife or wives were, or who his son's wives were. Bible's silent on that, which uh, makes me wonder, you know. There's just some things in the Bible that just aren't there. So you got to kind of fill in the blanks and tell people, well, this is my opinion. Uh, I could be wrong, but, you know. So, all right, let's take a look at Egypt. Egypt is never spoken of kindly in Scripture. Now, in part one, I proved from the Scripture that Egypt was the land of Ham. Okay? Okay. I wonder if it's a coincidence that they call pork ham because Noah actually cursed Ham's child. 
Uh, let's see. Genesis 9, 18. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem. Now Shem, that's where you get the word Semites. Shemites. The H is kind of silent. Um, you ever heard of Semitic? Yeah. Were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. Well, guess what? Canaan, who became the father of the Canaanites, went into the land which they called Canaan. Evidently, probably their father, the devil, probably told them that this was the promised land, and it was theirs. And then later on, the Lord said to Israel, go into the land. Now, if you've never read um, the books of Moses, you should. Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the book of, uh, let's see. But yeah, you should read the book of Joshua. That's the big one where God told Joshua to go into the land and kill the Canaanites. And people say, oh, that Bible is horrible, it's cruel. Well, you know, I've got an entire Bible study of why the Lord said to exterminate the Canaanites. They were satanic hybrids. Genesis 6, sons of God, uh, read Job 38, where, you know, the, uh, you know, they, the, the churches want you to believe that uh, godly men married ungodly women and then they had giants for children. You know, think Goliath. I mean, this is the kind of nonsense that comes out of the demon nominational churches. And I've got an entire playlist on that if you're interested, for as long as the tube allows it to stay up. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think about it. Boy, I've got a lot of topics I've covered. If uh, I don't think we have much time, I really don't. I, uh, but, like I say, anybody wants uh, an SD card with all the Bible studies and wants to post them online when I'm gone... Feel free to do it. Uh, let me know. But uh, the Lord told Joshua, go into the land that was already inhabited by the Canaanites. Okay, They'd already built houses. They'd already planted vineyards and planted fruit trees. Go in and kill them all. Don't marry their daughters. Don't take their sons for your daughters. Don't marry them. Exterminate them. The Philistines, the giants, Goliath, was just one tribe of the Canaanites. You know, really, you know, they want you to think that godly men, Genesis 6, godly men married ungodly women and they had giants for children. And then God said to kill them all. And then they'll say, well, you know, that's the Old Testament. The God of the Old Testament, he was this cruel, evil SOB. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Shh. but now we got Jesus and we're under grace and, and now Jesus loves us all. And this is the kind of nonsense that uh, comes out of the demon nominational church world. So, yeah. All right, so let's take a look. All right, so uh, we show that uh, Ham is the father of Canaan. All right, uh, let's see. So in Genesis 9, verse 18, you know, we read, And the sons of Noah that went forth from uh, of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. All right, so... And he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. 
And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. What does this mean, nakedness of his father? So when you start talking about uncovering the nakedness, um, you know, I could probably make this a an entire study uh, of just the sin of Ham. Uh, you know, all these doctrines just weave, you know, they all intertwine. And But what does it mean uncovering your father's nakedness? Well, Leviticus 18, um, let's see, let's read a few of these verses. Leviticus 18, 15. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law. She is thy son's wife. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Uh, is this talking about undressing your daughter-in-law? No. You're talking about sex, okay? Leviticus 18, 7. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother thou shalt not uncover she is thy mother, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Verse 11, the nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter, begotten of thy father, she is thy sister, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Verse 10, the nakedness of thy son's daughter or of thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover, for theirs is thine own nakedness. Verse 18, Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. What does that mean? Oh, well, don't undress your uh, a, a woman and her daughter. Really? No. It's talking about having sex. You know, having a little mother-daughter action there is uh, forbidden in Leviticus 18 and verse 17. And I'm trying not to be crude here, but I mean, you know, um, yeah. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter, neither shalt thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness, for they are her near kinswoman. It is wickedness. Ah, there we go. It's wickedness. It's, you know, we're not talking about undressing somebody, okay? If you want, you can read the entire 18th chapter of Leviticus, uh, you know. So, what, uh, what do you think happened here? Well, Genesis 9, verse 22, And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without. Now, there's basically two schools of thought. One, some people say that uh, he sodomized his father or that he had relations with uh, Noah's wife, which is not necessarily his mother. It could have been his mother, but it possibly could have been a stepmother. We don't know. Um, this is kind of an open kind of thing. That's the only two possibilities that I can think of. If somebody has another possibility, I'm interested. But, so, verse 23. And Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it upon both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father, and their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. Uh, you know, people read this, and, you know, they, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, Ham just looked at his dad when he was, you know, drunken and, and naked. But it says in verse 24, And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. Uh... So, if you're passed out drunk, how do you know somebody looked at your naked body? 
So there's something to be, you know, there's something going on here. And I'm not exactly 100% sure what it is. But uh, verse 25, And he, Noah, and he said, Cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years. Uh, one thing I find interesting, and I could be wrong about this, I don't believe the Bible records that Noah had any children after this. I don't know. Is that significant? I don't know. Now, the thing is, uh, Egypt was full of all kinds of false gods. Um, I can't even think of all of them. But uh, some of these pictures that you're seeing are uh, false gods of Egypt. I mean, some of them had like, you had the one god that had the bird head, uh, you had Set, you had Anubis, Hathor, um, and all the plagues of Egypt that the Lord set upon them, uh, turning the, the river into blood, and the hail, and the fire, and uh, the darkness. The darkness was actually a challenge to the god of the, the sun god of Egypt. I think that was Set, if I remember correctly. Um, and then you had a god of agriculture, you had a god of the fish, uh, by whatever names they went by. All those plagues in Egypt was a challenge by the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Israel to the gods of Egypt. Basically, God, it was like throwing down the, the, the gauntlet, throwing down the glove as a challenge. And... Uh, the gods of Egypt came down, uh, well, they came out on the bad, the, the bad end of that deal. So, you know, I, I kind of suspect all those uh, depictions in the pyramids and their tombs of, for example, the uh, one god, I think it was Set, like I say, had a bird's head and a man's body. Now, I wondered, were those uh, genetically modified beings by the fallen angels? Were they doing genetic experiments back then? Or were they fallen angels? I mean, let's face it. You got some um, very unusual fallen angels in Scripture. I don't know how many of you uh, watched uh, Stargate or SG-1 or Star Trek or whatever, all those other, you know, Hollywood things, but uh, they mock, they mock us in those shows. I mean, basically, they teach the opposite of everything that the Bible teaches, and they even use sometimes Bible names. For example, uh, Journey to uh, Babel or Babel, uh, Star Trek. And, uh, you know, it's just sometimes I watch stuff just to see where they're hurting us. Not hurt, not pain, but as in hurting cattle, you know, H-E-R-D, uh, where they're trying to get us to go, what direction into this is why i'm uh, so adamant about these new bible versions i mean i spent a year on the bible version issue and just looking at what bible verses were changed and deleted or and added things that they added um, gave me a very 
good idea of the direction that they were trying to lead us and the warnings that they were trying to get rid of. There's going to be a whole lot of Bible translators they are going to find out that they're going to hell because they deleted things in Scripture. Of course, these uh, new Bible versions will say, well, you know, the King James adds scriptures that they're not in the originals well i'm telling you people over 90 something percent of the manuscript fragments of the greek new testament support the king james i think it's like three to five percent support the uh the modern bible versions and of course they say well you know the thing is oh uh, yeah the, the modern bible versions use manuscripts that are older and better and all this garbage you know what let them uh let them lie one day their day will be up so all right so is egypt a good thing in the bible no why revelation chapter 11 and verse 8 oh by the way the vatican's manuscripts for the bible do not even have the book of Revelation in their manuscripts. Believe it or not, book of, book, book of Revelation doesn't exist in their manuscripts. Doesn't exist. Some people say, well, you know, the book of Revelation doesn't belong in the Bible. I, there are people that say that. Believe it or not, there are. Revelation 11, 8, and their dead bodies. Whose dead bodies? Well, these are the two witnesses of Revelation 11. They confront the false prophet. And then the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit kills them. They lie in the street for three days, and then they're, they come back to life. Matter of fact, there was a movie. Boy, I can't remember I think it was in the 70s. Uh, there was a computer that took over basically the world. And then there was two people that tried to uh, stop the computer. And then they demanded that these two people be killed and left in the street. And the camera, well, the computer had all kinds of cameras all over the place. I can't remember the name of this movie. I never watched the whole thing. And I was not a believer then. But they they lied in the street for three days. They were told to let them lie there for three days. And, um, and then after, you know, after you become a believer and you start reading this stuff, uh, you're like, wow, Hollywood was mocking us even back then. But this uh, computer was became a dictator I just, I don't remember the name of the movie, and I don't remember who was in it. I don't remember. I never watched it. Just, I saw the two witnesses thing. But, all right, Revelation 11, 8. The two witnesses, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And, of course, people say, oh, well, psh, that's easy. Jesus was crucified by the Romans. No, it says where, not by who. And besides, the Bible says it was the uh, you-know-whos that killed Jesus, not Rome. Pilate tried to release him three times. So how is it that Rome was responsible for killing him? They, they weren't. But it says where also our Lord was crucified. Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Duh! I mean, let the Bible interpret the Bible. I'm sure the modern Bibles probably changed that, but, you know, Egypt is, you know, uh, spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Sodom and Egypt. So, Egypt in Scripture is never, never, never 
a good thing that I can find. Absolutely not. And, oh, by the way, on my playlist, um, if you click on my name on the, Bible, the video, it'll take you to the home page. Click on playlists. You've got the angels that send the sons of God study. You've got uh, God's covenant promises with Abraham, which covers the seed line. You've got, uh, let's see, the, the plagues of Egypt, which mimic, in the book of Revelation, the plagues, the bowls, the judgments. They sort of kind of line up. I mean, there's some difference between the two of them, but there's a lot of similarities there, too. And I go more into detail about the gods of Egypt and uh, let's see, what else? Yeah, well, the Canaanites. Oh, and um, the uh, Arab world in Bible prophecy. So, you know, I've got well over a thousand, hour, a thousand Bible studies. And a lot of them are an hour long or more. Yeah, some of them are shorter, but... You know, I probably do have a th at least a thousand hours worth of studies. Um, and like I say, I try to, I, I try very hard to uh, stick close to the Bible. And, you know, if it's my opinion, I'll let you know, hey, this is what I kind of leaning towards. Uh, sort of like the two witnesses of Revelation. One of them is going to be Elijah. At least that's what uh, the Old Testament says. But other people say, well, you know, it could be Enoch, could be Moses. Eh, you know, that's why I say it could be either one of them. I kind of lean towards Enoch uh, because Enoch never died. But then again, at the, uh, when Jesus went up to the mountain, was transfigured before Peter, who appeared unto him? Moses and Elijah the living and the dead, the Old Testament prophet, and the law. So, I don't know. All right, I think this is going to be the end of part two. Um, I consider this part of the hogs and dogs and hogs, but really it's a study on Egypt and the um, sin of Ham. So I'm probably going to call it that, but I'll stick it in the um, hogs and dogs and hogs playlist. So there's just so many themes that just interwoven. It's just, you know, sometimes I have a hard time knowing where to start and where to stop. It's kind of tough sometimes. But, it, you know, it's really wonderful having... Uh, for example, the King James Bible online or the Blue Letter Bible, because I can look up things, words, and word associations, and then I can pause the sound recorder here and then um, go on to the next subject. So it, it's really wonderful. Uh, it's just unbelievable. The uh, it used to. I used to have to uh, get my Strong's Concordance and look up something and then have to go through uh, the Bible and find it. But, you know, with this, all I got to do is just click, 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 and it's there. I mean, I was able, because of the Blue Letter Bible, I was able to do a complete three-month Bible college class in basically four days. I mean, you know, I, I put probably... 8 to 12 hours uh, for those days, but I knocked it out in four days. It was like a three-day weekend, if I remember correctly. And uh, because I could look everything up on online. I mean, it's a wonderful tool for you, everybody. I mean, not just me. Uh, it's, it's incredible. And then you can cut, copy, and paste. Um... Uh, 
you know, and that's not just what I did. I just didn't just copy and paste. I mean, I would find the companion verses and uh, put those together, and then I would uh, print up the sheet, and then I mailed it in. Well, and then eventually the college went to uh, email, which made it really easy. I mean, it's just unbelievable, because back when I first started uh, the stuff, I actually had to type papers. You know, and I haven't typed, I hadn't typed papers since uh, college in the 80s, and then uh, Army reports when I was in the Army as a clerk back in the 70s. And uh, what kills me is <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm more skilled with the uh, faster typist now than I was when I was in the Army as a clerk typist. So, I don't know. But enough about me. All right, so this will be the end of part two. And uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>